Hi, it's Panda Movies here. Today, I'm going to explain the Filipino horror movie called Block Z. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. Enjoy the video. Block Z is the most recent and one of the very few zombie movies produced in the Philippines. The story mainly revolves around father and daughter Mario and PJ, and how they are bound to survive an emerging zombie apocalypse with a strained relationship. The movie starts off with several news reports that an unknown epidemic has been sweeping the country. Meanwhile, it was just a normal day for the rest of the population that remains to be unaffected by the said epidemic. Mario, a former overseas Filipino worker, brings his daughter PJ, a medical student in her senior year, to her first day of junior internship at San Lazaro University's hospital. PJ has always dreamed of becoming a doctor, but her parents could barely afford to send her to medical school, which is why Mario was forced to find a job abroad and leave PJ and her mother. The distance was already beginning to cause a strain in Mario's relationship with his daughter and intensified even more when PJ's mother died from a fatal stroke. Failing to save her mother traumatized PJ and the absence of her father during her trying times sealed their fallout. Mario and PJ arrived at the busy hospital and PJ reunited with her blockmates in Block Z Erica and Miles are fellow med students who also happen to be her longtime friends, and then there's Lucas, the captain of the basketball team who secretly harbors feelings for PJ. As PJ proceeds to start her hospital duty, Mario drives home, but accidentally hits a pedestrian who secretly intended to scam him of money. However, instead of pain, Mario brings the man to San Lazaro's hospital, where he meets his daughter again. For their first case, PJ and Erica are assigned to take care of Angie, a mother who appears to have a human bite in her leg. While the pair were trying to figure out where the bite came from, Angie suddenly seizes and dies shortly after. PJ goes to comfort Angie's daughter, Ruby, over her mother's death. PJ's fellow students, Miles and Gary, head over to the morgue to bring over Angie's body, but she suddenly reanimates and bites Gary's neck. Miles runs away in fear as Angie begins to attack other people in the hospital, infecting them with a virus, instantly killing and eventually reanimating them as the undead. The undead begin to terrorize students and personnel around the university, including Lucas's team where he emerges as the only survivor. Mario and the pedestrian, on the other hand, were able to flee the hospital and meet Lucas on their way out. Unfortunately, the pedestrian had been bitten and infected, forcing the two to kill him before he could kill them. Realizing that PJ must still be around the university, the pair make it their mission to find her, so they split up in hopes of finding her faster. In the office of the university's vice president, Gilo, the student council president with a military general father, calls his father for rescue via the helicopter on the hospital's helipad. Gilo then informs the vice president, Vanessa, to not tell anyone else about the rescue, since he only told his father to make room for just the two of them. Despite Gilo's firm instructions, Vanessa secretly informs the university counselors to spread the word about the evacuation. Back to the chaos happening within the university grounds, Lucas finally manages to find PJ with Erica and Miles, and the group work together to safely flee the school. Unbeknownst to them, the military was already barricading the school, placing the university under quarantine, but with the order to kill zombies and even the uninfected fleeing from the front gate. Back in Vanessa's office, Gilo is informed that the information about the evacuation has been spread to the whole school, so he goes to confront Vanessa about it. Vanessa chastises him for only thinking about himself, even when he has the resources to help everyone. Their argument leads to a scuffle and Gilo accidentally pushes Vanessa down the stairs, killing her. PJ's group stumbles upon the scene, but before they could react Gilo immediately lies that the vice president was infected, so he had to take her out in self-defense. Gilo joins their group, and they plan their route to the hospital. As they begin to make their way towards the hospital, they are suddenly overwhelmed with zombies forcing them to head towards the school's church. Luckily, Mario comes to their rescue, and he leads them inside the church. As it turns out, Maria managed to hole up in the church with the child Ruby and security guard Bibiath. As they were trying to plan their next steps, Gilo reveals that most of them have to be left behind since his father's helicopter can only fit two people. This angers the rest of the group and convinces Gilo that the only way he can make it to the helipad is if they help him, and in return he must help them too. Seeing as this is his only way to survive, Gilo agrees. 
The group makes their way towards the hospital, passing by the faculty. They were almost through when Ruby sees her zombified mother, Angie, and runs towards her. This alerts the rest of the zombie herd of their presence. Ruby is devoured by the undead, while the others are forced to leave, when Gilo selfishly locks them out of the faculty room. The group find safety in the dormitory where they rest and try to go over their plan, giving them time to rest and recover. They reminisce on their past and this gives PJ and Mario the chance to talk about their issues and eventually reconcile. During their unguarded moment, however, a zombie attacks and bites Mario before he could have the chance to kill it. After killing the zombie, Mario tells the group to kill him before he turns to prevent him from killing them. Nobody had the courage to kill him, so they opted to lock him inside the dorm's closet instead. Mario and PJ say their final goodbye before the rest of them continue to make their way towards the helipad. As they go along, the group manages to discover that the zombies' weaknesses are headshots and water, and they are able to get rid of more zombies than before. Unfortunately, the zombies still manage to fight back, mortally wounding Miles who makes a last stand before he is killed. Bibiath tells them to move forward as she decides to stay behind, fending off as many zombies as she can to give them more time. The number of zombies chasing after them grows so large that Erica, grief-stricken, sacrifices herself to let PJ and Lucas escape. The pair manage to reach the hospital's rooftop, but with a herd of zombies right behind them. Lucas lifts PJ to the helipad, PJ was about to help him up as well, but he instead chooses to use himself as bait to lure the herd away from PJ by jumping off the building. The downcast PJ loses consciousness and awakens the next day with no helicopter in sight. That very moment, she discovers that she has a bite mark in her hand but feels no symptoms of the virus. Realizing that she is immune to the virus, she fights her way back to the dorms, killing several zombies including Angie in the process. She reunites with her father who is also immune. The two decide to explore other escape options and recall an ancient tunnel underneath the church that the child Ruby had previously discovered. They make their way to the church and through the tunnel, and there they encounter Gilo, delirious from being infected and angered from being abandoned by his father. With difficulty, the duo manage to elude him and escape through a manhole and leave Gilo to be devoured by approaching zombies. PJ and Mario realize that the infection has spread beyond the university into the wider city. Accepting their new reality, they arm themselves and make their way to safety. The scene cuts to news reports sharing the zombies' vulnerability to water. Bibiath's broadcasted message of her survival is also seen. Fortunately for the rest of the country, a large typhoon engulfs the Philippines, weakening and killing most of the undead in the process. The end of the movie is set two weeks after the devastating but life-saving typhoon. A group of raiders is seen in the university grounds, they discover an alive but badly injured Lucas. Their leader decides to take him in as the credits roll with an open-ended plot and a huge possibility for a sequel.